Hello and welcome to a 3v3 cast on Argent Shell Freeduck. Starting off, we have Freeze Death playing as the Lord General. We have Marky Mark playing as the Apo, and we have Cape Land playing as the Lord Commissar for the blue team. For the red team, we have Champion Player playing as Lord Commissar. We have Queek playing as Lord General. And finally, we have Fummy playing as the Chaos Sorcerer. Well, starting today's cast as well, the Saints mentioned that there is a big announcement or an announcement or announcement that came out on Monday. The, on, if you have a look at the YouTube forward slash Donovoir, Relic's official Donovoir YouTube channel, there is an announcement today. I'm not sure what the announcement is since this video was recorded and also comes out before the announcement is made, but it's coming out on the 3rd of May at 3 pm GMT. A big announcement, so be sure to check that out and hopefully something good will come out here. But both IG players at the bottom side right now, both with the Death Krieg color scheme as well, going to be fighting each other. That's going to be fun later on when both players are using the same color scheme to tell who's who, other than the fact that one's got red above them and the other's got blue above them. Meanwhile, in the center of the map here, both players are fairly grouped up here. Another multi last turret game placed down here for Queek, and at the same time, Fami is going to be infiltrating here with that Mark of Zinch worship. And at the same time, Blue Team are just sitting back fairly passively. They themselves putting down some deployable cover here from Cape Land. Meanwhile, the APO Marky Mark is going to be sitting behind some green cover here with his tactical space marines. And at the bottom side, it looks like Freeze Death is going to be able to actually capture the VP. He does have a Mossy Last Turret 2 defender as well, and it looks like he wants to go in for a little bit of a power bash as well. There are some flamers here for Champion Player. So he can try and burn down that turret later on at the same time. The flame is going to be very effective here against these multiple guardsmen, especially if you execute the Lord Commissar for that 100% damage boost. The flame is going to really tear down almost anything with rapid succession. With those flamers, and already Lord General having a sergeant here with the squad to actually give out heal packs to his own units. That turret now starting to fire away there at Lord Commissar. The Sentinel Stomp coming in here from Freeze Death can prevent these guardsmen from going in but the commissar is determined to try and tie up and wipe these guardsmen here is chasing them down with his last pistol and his default sword here could even see the power sword come in later on since it just gives a damage boost and also the inspiration will be quite good on the guardsmen as well along the opportunity to special very similar to how the battle cry and the force commander works when you do get the power sword on that lord commissar but in the end champion player going to get forced off might even lose the sentinel here the enemy Sentinel should be able to chase down Champion Player Sentinel here, down to just 40 HP, getting extremely low right now, and it will go down. It's going to make it very difficult to push even further forward. Meanwhile, at the same time, a bit of an engagement has gone down here. Cape Plan has also lost his Sentinel. I believe he had a Sentinel. I believe this is the carcass of the Sentinel right here of Cape Plan. As Red Team were able to push up a little bit and were able to take down this deployable cover here or take that the area where the deployable cover was placed down. And are able to push through together with some more Mark of Zinch worship going down, although it's not really needed since there is no current threat yet. Meanwhile, in the bottom side here, the flame is doing a lot of work. You can see his guardsmen here, double flame is in fact here for champion player. The power has also been decapped against him as well. Lord General trying to remain on the field, able to reinforce retinue members on the field at the cost of 25 requisition. Quite expensive actually for just retinue members, but being that you can reinforce on the field, the cost is justified in that sense. Flamers also not the most effective against the Sentinels here, but the Flamers will definitely come in very handy against enemy guardsmen and at the same time against this turret, but at the same time a flank coming in here for Queek does have some Catachins on the field here. Going to be coming down with his Lord General, going to be chasing the enemy Sentinel here. And Freeze Death will lose his Sentinel, Marcy Last Turret is remaining up right now, but some Flamer Guardsmen are in the area, and that turret will get salvaged before it gets burnt down, since there's no point in keeping that might as well salvage the turret. No, no, you're going to get doubled, get a bit of a refund on that turret. At the same time, Fummy's Havoc's getting knocked over there. Grenade Barrage onto the Guardsmen here. Very nice in combination with Doom Boss from the Chaos Sorcerer, bringing those Guardsmen down to a quarter health. We want to come start with Cape Plant. Having that Power Sword here gets to be very effective against the Heavy Infantry. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. That special there against those heretics wiping Fummy's heretics there that way. Worshipping, I can't believe he actually just killed four models out with that special. That is an insane special there from the Lord Commissar. Some guards are also going to get melee down here against Cape Land. Those CSM trying to get revenge for those heretics that just died there. 
Quicker's also going to be pushing in himself with the Lord Gerald. Does have cast chins using the Iron Reliable to unset them up. And in the end, the Devastators will be forced off. They look like they may have been able to set up just in time. But even if they had set up the cast chins, would have gone close on the cast chins with 120 power melee as a squad. Now quite dangerous to try and retreat through as a heavy infantry squad such as Devastate, especially when you don't have that much health. The Astrogens would be easily taken in multiple models, sometimes it's better to retreat and not lose any models than to try and hold the ground and risk losing a squad. At the bottom side, the map champion player going to go for Spotters, meanwhile Freeze Death going for a heavy weapons team here. The Spotters should be able to unset up that heavy weapons team, especially in tier 1, given that they can't have that refractor shield upgrade come tier 2, though the Spotters will definitely struggle, given that the heavy weapons team, the refractor shield, means that the lead model, the model on with the heavy bolter, cannot get knocked down, and also takes a reduced 50% damage as well from ranged damage. And also that's turret though, going to go up here for champion players, going to force Freeze Dev to get some flamers of his own since he has actually got nothing to interrupt this turret or nothing to kill the turret in quick succession. The heal pack there from the Lord General from that sergeant, going to be healing up those guardsmen, handing out heal packs for the guardsmen to actually use at a later date. And that heavy weapons team as well, going to get some smoke dropped onto them, but unsetting up here the Commissar is able to go in and actually tie up that heavy weapons team here and Freeze Death is going to get forced off the field completely here, so trying to reinforce the rest of new members on the field here, but very expensive to carry on doing that throughout the entire game, but the Commissar going in a little bit aggressively here, looks like he may be able to barely walk out of there. At the same time, Chaos Sorcerer backing out the area, Grand Launcher Heretics with a perfect opportunity for a grenade barrage as everything is grouped up at this particular power node here. There are no Havocs in the area just yet, there are some Devastators though for Marky Mark, there is a multi-last turret as well behind some green cover but Flame and Tactical Marines though can burn it down fairly easy. The second multi-last turret game get burned down first and then Crimson be followed up with the second one, the APO healing means that the Tactical Marines will be able to remain on the field for quite some time. At the same time, Cape Land going to go in with that Lord Commissar going to melee down some heretics there. Meanwhile, the Tactical Marines are able to take down both turrets here. And that's going to make it difficult for Red Team to actually hold the area, especially without the Havocs. Havocs are currently in base here for Fummy and very spread right now. Extremely spread right now. There's one model here as a second model at base. <laughs> I'm not sure what is going on there. At the same time, the bottom VP remaining neutral between both players here. Freeze Death is on his way to make a push once again. This monster last turret is a very low spot, is going to try and provide some support by knocking over the guardsmen. Could use a smoke shell to force the guardsmen to get in a little bit closer, but some more guardsmen are on the way here for Dandy Frontline, who is also known as champion player, by the way. Uh, but some more guardsmen were on the way, so the turret did get salvaged. I think that he could actually try to hold the area instead of sending or instead of salvaging that turret. Plasma Devastator is going to knock over the Lord General here, going to kill a rescue member as well. Catchers will need to be careful here. The Plasma Devastator is actually misfiring, they're very unfortunate for Marky Mark here. Catchers is going to force melee here in risk of that point blank shot, but instead the shot is going to be for that Lord General once again. Catchers is going to force melee here, begin suppressed by the Devastators, not using their own reliable. It's a bit of an awkward situation to use the own reliable because of the elevation with that staircase there. At the same time, Fami going to be pushing in here, getting the aspiring champions for both of his CSM squads here. We'll have them already queued up, so when he hits tier 2, they will start building a generator and a power node have been taken down here. Havoc's also set up in a defensive way, so the Chaos Sorcerer will fall back to that Grenade Launcher Heretics as well in the area. And it looks like that Cape Land's just going to head on, try and go in here. The Grenade Barrage, they're going to knock over the guards, and also catching out some CSM here. Havoc's are now reset up, maybe not at the best angle covering covering Cape Land but not covering the Space Marine decide if he wants to come in the Aspiring Champions now coming in but both the CSM squads have now been forced off the Grenade Launcher Heretic is doing quite a lot of damage here in the Chaos Sorcerer arming himself with the Rod of Warp Fire as well but Whirlwind is on the scene missing every single barrage there against the Chaos Havocs and Auto Cannon also sets up here for Queen can try and focus down that Whirlwind instead of going to focus down that Apo with the Power Axe so you can't get into melee combat here the APO will get forced off here in the end. Sentinel also coming in for a little bit of support, and the also cannon will remain set up, but is inside the arc radius though of that P Dev squad and will need to be careful of it. These P Devs should be able to do quite a bit of work. Meanwhile, you know, Bosom is just a trail of guardsmen bodies here. Difficult to tell whose bodies are whose since both players are playing as IG and both players are also using the Death Creed colour scheme. 
Manticore Strike though, coming in also Devastates is just after the drop pods come in, so all these units that were reinforced have all just died instantly, in fact the P devs and regular Devastators are so low right now, they must go down here, 20 HP, looks like it might be able to barely escape there, P devs are going to try and get a shot in, but the P devs as well, going to reinforce from the drop pod, but going to cast quite a lot of requisition here, the drop pod feeling almost wasted because of how many models died due to that Manticore Strike. All the models that did get reinforced and just died when Drop Pod came in a little bit later and it would have been fine, but Guardsman goes to be retreating away. Here there is a Manticore Strike and it is going to be huge onto the Guardsman here, killing so many models, killing 8 plus 5 models, 13 models total dying to this Manticore here. And the flare getting dropped down as well. Or I thought I heard a flare get called down here. At the same time, there is a Vanquisher turret in the top side of the map here, getting shot down by PDEVs. PDEVs being just inside the arc there of that Vanquisher turret, and it will go down to that third and final shot. The Sentinel trying to escape here. It looks like it might go down here, down to 60 HP. PDEV shot, if well placed, could take it down instead of still trying to ground target where that turret once stood. Okay, Plans Havoc, so getting hit with a smoke shell. Some CSM on the way to actually defend, also getting the Chains of Torment as well, so you can actually lock down Garzman, lock down that Lord Commissar, and allow the CSM to actually get into melee range at the same time. A flare gain drop down as well. These heretics so low right now are going to go down. And it looks like there's going to be some bloodlessness. No, sorry, it's actually going to be Dark Flames. I can even see the rest of the red circles. That Dark Flames though is going to be absolutely brutal here. The Garzman barely gets in the way here. Even the double mark of Zinch upgrade coming in, which isn't necessarily needed against IG, but Still strong nonetheless, Inferno damage is always good. Oh, P devs though, with the friendly fire damage onto Marky Mark's own Tactical Marines, killing a friendly Tactical Marine as well. It's very unfortunate there for him. 389 VPs to 400, 368. The game is very even so far. P devs going to be firing once more, going to hit nothing. It looks like they're still ground targeting. They really need to stop ground targeting and stop firing at nothing because it's not going to work out too well here. Need to use ground target and stop ground targeting once the target ground targeted has been killed or is out of the area or anything like that. The April with the power axe is going to be destroying these Mark of Zinch CSM here, the special as well. The Aspiring Champion could even go down here. The Aspiring Champion stopped getting focused though by the April. The April decided to focus on different models for some reason there. So the Aspiring Champion will live. The Chimera taking damage here from Bloodlets is even actually set up as a base. You can see the teleporter relay beacon there. Chimera set as a base guardsman trying to repair at the same time the Bloodletter spawning circle has also been called in here so the Bloodletters are going to be bleeding these guardsmen here. Does Cape Clan actually have the resources to keep on buying guardsmen? He does actually have a lot of requisitions saved up but he's going to have to be constantly reinforcing these guardsmen here and there's going to be so much red given as well to just care sorcerer for killing all of these guardsmen. Now the stormtroopers here, it looks like they were able to take down a Manticore here against Champion player, also known as Dandy Frontline. I believe this was a Manticore, even though it does kind of. I mean, they all, all IG vehicles kind of look the same at the base, don't they? At the same time, and more Mouse and Stormtroopers as well for Champion player himself to actually count. I'm not sure what Freeze Death has actually got in terms of vehicles, but there are some Mouse and Stormtroopers there for Champion player should a Manticore for him or a Chimera come out, anyways. Our Flame of Guardsmen, though, are going to be doing what they can against. These guardsmen here getting knocked over though by the creeping basilisk barrage from the Lord General here of Freeze Death, doing quite a bit of damage here on retreats as well, nearly wiping a squad of guardsmen on retreat, gaining away of just 56 HP. The champion player hit with the bionic eye onto the Lord Commissar executing some of these stormtroopers as well. When you execute your stormtroopers, the melter bomb on them or the grenades actually do double damage as well, so that's something to consider when using execution on stormtroopers at the ability as well. But they have will do that double damage and can be extremely effective at taking down vehicles, especially a Chimera. When it's getting massive repair support, the Melter Bomb doing double damage as well, the Stormtroopers doing double damage will come in very handy at taking out an enemy vehicle in a mirror match or even in other matches. For some reason, that Heavy Uppers team are getting hit by the smoke, but because of the Lord General using his sniper rifle ability to fire on my target, giving that extra range is actually negating what that Storm what that spotter cloud was actually doing. At the same time, melt stormtroops here for freeze death, getting a bit caught out. Level 3 stormtroopers, I might add. These stormtroopers have done quite a lot of work this game then to be level 3 at this point. 
killing maybe multiple vehicles and not just a single Manticore here by the looks of it than if they've actually leveled up that much and gained that much experience. 347 DPs, 330 Flame Attacks coming. He's going to try and do what they can, but these double plasma guardsmen are going to be shredding the heavy infantry here of these tactical marines. And with the Lord General forcing melee here, these tactical marines are going to be unable to stay here. And given this retreat path as well, you just know that there is a relay beacon. If there was no relay beacon, these tactical marines would have run down this corridor here. But the relay beacon is still active, and blue team, sorry, red team, do actually know about the beacon anyway. It just shows that the Space Room player Marking Mark is also using said beacon. Mark of Zinch Havocs as well on the scene it will be very effective at taking down that Chimera should they be able to get the chance to move up here. Cape Plan going to get forced off himself. Cape Plan with a fairly small army here of just Double Guardsmen and the Chimera which is actually used as a mobile base so not even in combat. At the same time, Marking Mark with quite a large army himself, even gain a Land Raider Redeemer here. Plasma Devastator Shot going to be hitting some Guardsmen once again, only killing a couple of models here. But these P-Devs do have the prime opportunity now. Their units are so group type here. These Mark of Zinch CSM should be the target for these P-Devs since they are heavy infantry and will take a lot of damage here. Instead, it looks like it's going to be the Lord General actually catching out some terrain there, Marking Mark. Instead, will not be able to get any shots on anyone. And some scouts are going to be going down. These scouts were unupgraded, so it's not a big loss here for Marky Mark and everything falling back to the beacon here for Blue Team. It seems like the guardsmen still remaining on the field though. For Cape Plan, going to be able to take down this Chaos Sorcerer as well, knocking him down once again. Sorcerer is level 4, it does have upgrades as well, so it's key to actually keep him alive. Plasma Devastators are set up almost inside the Chimera here, able to fire out freely though. Going to be hitting some blood letters, so fortunately for Marky Mark, he's not actually hitting the Chimera itself and killing it by accident because I know that sometimes Plasma Devastators can bug out. Recently, I've seen it happen to Ace where it hits some terrain just right in their face and actually blew up his own PDEV squad. The PDEV is going to be set up in more of a sensible place, although doing friendly fire damage to Cape Landons again. Should try and focus down the CSM. They're a much better target for the Plasma Devastators to actually fire at. And they're up in quite a lot of damage as well, so there's all the more reason to even focus them down. Champion player though coming out with the Lehman Rust. Meanwhile, Freeze Death is opting to go for a Bane Blade. We'll need to wait a little bit more time for that Bane Blade to come out. Some Stormtroopers in the back line here for Champion player with the Stormtroopers. Not going to be able to do too much. Probably expecting the Lehman Rust, given that it is Lord General, and the Lord General can call them down with his with his global ability to just call it down and guess it on the field earlier. At the same time, Freeze Death's Melter Stormtroopers as well. I did manage to take down the entire generator farm here of Red Team. Now going to be retreating all the way back to base, so I can see why they are so highly leveled. At the same time, Champion Player is opting to do the same thing with his own Stormtroopers and Freeze Death with no units in the area and, and no one else in the area. In fact, they were with, it's trying to fire away down the hill, but it looks like that this kind of tower is going to be in the way. Well, when they still got his aim posed at these. Stormtroopers and you can see it's just catching on all the terrain with the Land Raider here as Chimera can maybe move up a little bit or can still act like a retreat beacon but at the same time it's going to be filling the same role of this Land Raider Redeemer so the Chimera might as well try and set up or try and reset up elsewhere. Well we're able to get in one shot here but going to either side of these Stormtroopers. Stormtroopers really need the retreats right now but the Commissar there for Cape Plan going to be landing a special there going to be obliterating those Stormtroopers. A Vanquisher turret going down here for Freeze Death at the same time. Bane Blades Plural, getting built here, one Bane Blade is out, Cape Plan getting a Bane Blade, and at the same time Queek has just got a Bane Blade coming out of base, there's going to be multiple Bane Blades on the map, and Fumi going for a Land Raider Phobos as well, there's going to be a load of super units now hitting the field here, 299 VPs to 306 here, perfect opportunity here. For some Dark Flames, given how groups have all these Guardsmen are here for the Chaos Sorcerer, could even try and wait for an Imperial Abyss and wait for another opportunity just like it. The Angels of Death did get used here, and Marky Mark with the armor and the Apoth carrying here, going to be healing up his entire army here, draining all of his energy, but the Purification rights instead of the Advanced Medical Equipment, I need to actually hold it for too long. And they dread, and they Lehman Rust getting dropped in here for Queek as well, and he's also recently just gotten a Bane Blade as well, so he's had a lot of resources stored up same time a rocket run going to be destroying Fumi's army here losing his Havocs losing a CSM squad down to just a single CSM squad and bloodletters as only sources of infantry here at the same time calling in Chaos Terminators and with a Land Raider Phobos on the way meanwhile Bane Blade is now assisting on top of the VP here getting knocked over for some reason what do you get knocked over by 
and we're getting, going to avoid getting knocked over for a second time with that refractor shield. Heavy weapons team with a last cannon will be essential to taking down this Bane Blade Commissar. The execution on the heavy weapons team is going to be sort of damaging to that Bane Blade. I believe the last cannon does 165 damage per shot for the IG heavy weapons team. And you think about it with the execution, that is 330 damage per shot being on par, in fact, actually with a last turret or a missile turret from either the Plague Champion or the Tech Marine. The heavy weapons team set up here for freeze death, along with that Bane Blade just sitting in the area. The Vanquisher Lehman Rust could also work as well. I believe that is a Vanquisher Cannon on that particular Lehman. It does look like one. But at the same time, because it's a Death Creek skin, the weapons do actually look a bit different anyway, so I'm not sure if that's a standard barrel with a different look. Actually, no, it looks like it is a standard barrel. That's a standard barrel, isn't it? Yeah, it's standard, sorry, that's a standard barrel, so I'm sure. Thanks for turret is a bit longer, isn't it? The Bane Blade out on the field here for Queek. The Sleeman Rust is backing out. The problem is Queek actually has no repair support whatsoever. All of his guardsmen are currently dead. So, as the Lord General himself, maybe you should consider putting down a repair bucket, given that as well, Fumi having a vehicle out and Queek himself having three vehicles out, three units in need of repair, plus this land raider for four. A repair bunker could be essential here, especially with Fumi not having any repair support whatsoever. Queek getting a Manticore as well. There are now more Bane Blades out in the field as Capeland's Bane Blade is also here. All the Bane Blades, all this, this is like a tabletop game where you see land raiders, Bane Blades just on the table here. And it looks like it's all about to kick off here and mid the one Bane Blade here for Queek. Driving forward, deciding that nah, it doesn't want to go in just yet, decides to back out a little bit. At the same time, there is a last cannon though for Marky Mark, throwing away at this Land Raider for us all the more reason to get a repair bunker and place it behind this structure here where the PDEVs cannot hit it as well. But at the same time, every player just seems to remain static for now, 299 VPs to 237. Red team will need to make a push at some point as they are slowly bleeding VPs. In fact, there is a super unit out for every player right now. There is a Bane Blade for all four IG players. There is a Land Raider Redeemer here for Marky Mark, and there is also a Land Raider Phobos here for Fumi. Every player has got a super unit out in the field here, but every player is too scared to engage each other. It's just a cold war here, as every player, you could actually just draw a line where all the territories lie, in fact as neither player seems ready to attack here. Both players, or all players in fact, maybe waiting until they hit 100 population. Marky Mark is the closest with 94. Meanwhile, Freeze Death on 61, Cape Plan 59, Champion Player 70, Queek 85, and Fumi 81. That looks like in Boston is going to be the first engagement here. Every player deciding to go in, the Fist of Rock is available for the Lord Commissar, the Flare going to be dropped on to prevent the enemy Bane Blade from firing away, hit the Demolisher Cannon now onto the Auto Cannon, going to be bringing it down to almost no health and going to force it to retreat away here. Meanwhile, some Guardsmen with Flamers with the Bionic Eye buff and the Fist of Rock is going to be growing in aggressively here, more Flamers coming in at the same time. Marky Mark trying to make his way down, the Land Raider Fob is going to cut Marky Mark off as he tries to push down the Demolisher Cannon here onto the Guardsmen, going to be spreading them around. Guardsmen needing to stay close to that Lord Commissar with the Fist of Brockus in order to remain effective here. The Lehman Rust as well has been upgraded with a Vanquisher now. It's firing away at that Bane Blade. Meanwhile, the Land Raider Fob is here going to force Marky Mark back to base and the Bane Blade going to be fighting the Bane Blade here. Queek fighting in a Manticore strike onto an enemy Bane Blade though of Cape Land. At the same time, Marky Mark just retreating to his Land Raider Redeemer here. Not going to be jumping into the fight with the Land Raider, but we jump into a fight with everything else. And at the same time, Fumi on his way. Bossom here. Freeze Death's Bane Blade is also getting forced off here as well. Doesn't look like it'll go down. Lehman is trying to chase, but all three vehicles cannot fit through this small gap here. We need to be a bit careful. Queek pushing, pulling out even. And Bane Blade and Vanquisher Lehman going to try and chase in. Bloodless is also going to go in and demolish a cannon. Also, these guardsmen here going to be knocking them around here. Guardsmen unable to actually repair the Bane Blade. The Norse Cannon is coming in to set up with the Lord General Sniper Rifle buff. Fire on my target could get activated here. At the same time, the Bane Blade and Lehman going to be back now. Angels of Death getting used as well as they shall know no fear as well. These Hatsuko Marines are going to be taking so much less damage here. Damage reduction by 50% in range with the and they shall know no fear. Along with the Angels of Death providing damage reduction as well. Even the Tome of Subjugation gets used here. Going to subjugate these missile launcher Tatsuko Marines. Meanwhile, the Chaos Sorcerer are going to try and fight that Commissar with the Fist of Brockus here in melee. 
Fist of Brock is being a much better melee weapon in comparison to the Rod of Warp Fire. The Fist of Brock is actually doing 85 heavy melee DPS in comparison to the Rod of Warp Fire, only doing 50 melee DPS, as well as the Stubbornness bonus on Cape Plans, Lord Commissar, giving it extra damage as well. What's the cannon going to finish its salvo there onto the Land Raider Phobos? And all the super units do remain alive for all players, going to be repairing up those super units. In fact, some Lehman's coming out now for Red Team. In fact, both Queek and Champion player gain their Lehman's at the same time as well. Meanwhile, all the super units did remain alive in that push. I don't think much actually died here. A lot of players were just forcing each other off. Squads having to reinforce, but I don't think any squads in particular or anything that stood out really died in that engagement. Just models lost and a push, which resulted in territory remaining exactly the same. Almost, but red team did get control of this VP now, and blue team will be the one to have to push against this VP since blue team are now slowly bleeding the VPs. We're going to be in the situation that red team were in earlier before red team made that large push to just gain this bottom of VP hit. Lord General just popping off Guardsman models here with that sniper rifle. Does have a high rate of fire, unable to take down Guardsman models with a single shot though. <laughs> Having a really high rate of fire, in fact. But Blue Team going to be pushing in, going to be bashing the power farm here on the contested VP side. Grimmie going to be pushing in himself as well to try and force Marking Mark's tactical marines off. It's only a small part of his army and should easily be forced off by these markers in each CSM and Terminators. In fact, the sergeant going to go down along with a secondary model. And his tactical marines are now forced off here. And it's actually costing Marking Mark quite a bit to reinforce in the field, but Marking Mark with almost a fully pop capped army here. And plenty of requisition, I'm sure he doesn't mind losing a couple of tactical marines here or there. Demolisher cannon here into a manticore strike here. Going to be doing quite a bit of damage here to this Bane Blade with the Bane Blade not carrying too much to Vanguish it. Lehman Rust is now here for champion player. Meanwhile, Queek did get another Lehman Rust out. He did actually lose the initial one in that push by the looks of it, since I did see him build one same time as champion player. But Blue Team able to actually push in or edge forward ever so slightly here too. Last kind of setup as well. Champion player's Bane Blade gaining very low. The Lehman Rust though, able to pop that Lord General here. And with the flare, the engagement is set to go off once again here. Champion player pushing in wants to force off those two heavy weapons teams so the Bane Blades and Lehmans will be free, but none shall fall activated here from Cape Plan. Going to mean that none of the Guardsmen shall go down. Lord General also trying to get rezzed as well. Manticore Strike and the Demolisher Cannon from the enemy Bane Blade. Going to be absolutely devastating to the army. Bloodless is coming in as well as with the Blood Circle as well. So more Bloodless is getting spawned. Lowing Bloodless also reinforcing the field should they lose any models here as well. All the Lehmans, all the tanks going to be pushing in. All the Guardsmen retreating away here though. The Marky Mark Angels and um, Marky Mark going to be activating Angels of Death here. Freeze Death off the field. Nearly the Bane Blade backing away here. And the Dirge Caster used to stun the Lord Commissar of Cape Land at the same time. Queek is just edging forward ever so slightly. Blue Team going to remain in control of their natural VP, but on the contested side at the very bottom. Blue team will be losing that VP that they just once reclaimed here. The Bane Blade going to be fighting Land Raider Phobos. The Phobos should win this engagement here against the Bane Blade, especially with some repair support here from Ch Champion Player. 227 VP, so 142 here. Guardsmen coming up, setting up here. I don't think they can fire down though, by the looks of it. They need to actually move down the staircase. They can fire down this staircase, but they can't fire over this wall, over this ledge. But the also cannons and the heavy weapons teams are trying to lean over. The Vanquish at Lehman Rust is though guessing a little bit low. The sniper rifle buff does boost the range of the last cannon. Look at that range here covering the entire corridor. One Vanquish at Lehman has just gone down. The Bane Blade does need to be careful here. And that extended range from the last cannon is absolutely devastating. Meaning if they try and back out, they can still get hit from a ridiculous range here. But it looks like a heavy weapons team may even go down here. The Bane Blade able to take it down. Terminators going in very aggressively here. And a nice use of the Chimera repositioning it for freeze left to use since Marking Mark does have his Land Raider Phobos, or Land Raider Redeemer, sorry, in mid. At the same time, Queek losing his Bane Blade here, going out of control, going quite quickly as well. And then blowing up down there is also going to lose his Lehman Rust if he's not careful. The Plasma Pistol from the Apo doing 3 to 4 damage here per shot. Apo though refusing to chase down that Lehman could have potentially killed it with a Plasma Pistol, which would have been quite interesting to actually see. 186 VPs to 142. Marky Mark is coming down here for a flank here. Could try and finish off this Lehman Rust with a Vangship Cannon, but he is level 4 with 600 health. He does have Guardsman supports repairing it as well. 
grenade launcher Heretic is going to be knocking over these tactical marines and they will get forced off. Meanwhile, the Bane Blade of Cape Land is going to be pushing in here in champion play. Gained another Lehman Rust out to replace the one that he lost earlier. At the same time, Red Team have cemented themselves now in this bottom lane. Put the Bane Blade here for champion play. We need to fall back so we can actually get some repairs on it. Weak though, without a Bane Blade, the only person that without a super unit, every other player in the game is still having their super units done that Land Raider Phobos Bane Blades on the field as well. Along with the Land Raider Redeemer here for Marking Mark, which is actually in need of some repairs. He does not have any scouts of his own. We need to rely on his teammates, heavy weapons teams, and guardsmen for a repair bunker to actually repair up this Land Raider Redeemer. In fact, he's making his way down to Boston, might try and go for a push onto the contested VP here. And another Manticore coming out for champion player. The incomes for some players here. Marky Mark at the very lowest requisition income of only plus 98. That's because he does have a 97 out of 100 sized army and because his team does not actually control the majority of requisition points or power points. At the same time, if you look at Red Team's economy, their economies are doing much better. Blue Team's the highest requisition income is 145. But at the same time, Blue Team do have higher pop caps in comparison to Red Team. Blue Team having the larger army in terms of figures in comparison to Red Team. Terminator is going to be pushing. You can see the demoralized buff on all of these guys in here, reducing their damage here. Terminators with the auto cannon. The auto cannon is now at the same range as the storm bolsters, which changed in the most recent patch. A last cannon is going to be firing away here for Marky Mark. That last cannon doing reduced damage though because of that demoralized buff, which has just ended now. At the same time, everything's still static there on that natural VP just to defend the area here, but Red Team lacking the army really to push against Blue Team and Blue Team lacking something to push here. But a Manticore Strike is going to be quite devastating here, the Heavy Weapons Team, so ignoring it though, Dura Factor Shield not knocking over that lead model, and in fact allowing the ma ra lead models to take extra damage there. The Land Raider Redeemer is here, so units can reinforce Dark Flames though, going to be absolutely beautiful and destructive here. I think Fumi could have maybe saved his red though for an Imperial Abyss. The Land Raider Phobos trying to drive into the Land Raider Redeemer here at this point. Land Raider Phobos though taking the brunt of the damage here. The last cannons coming out of every direction with an auto cannon. A predator here for Marky Mark. That Land Raider Phobos is going to go down. There is a rocket run coming in at the same time here. The Valkyrie driving out there an awkward angle here. You know, a second rocket run is going to be enough to take down a heavy weapons team. The other heavy weapons team is very low right now. The Land Raider Redeemer, though, giving these guardsmen and tactical marines the ability to reinforce on the field while at the same time giving them a healing bonus as well. At the same time, Queek is also trying to push in through mid in the corridor between mid and top. At the same time, Champion Play is getting forced off here as well. Looks like the flare has now run out here. Terminators are going to try and escape here. Not sure if they will be able to do so, though. Terminator is very low. Manticore Strike going down once again here onto the staircase. All the units trying to retreat away. Going to hit that Land Raider Redeemer quite hard here. And Queek looks like he could lose his Lehman Rust here to the Predator. That Predator itself is very low. Queek might be able to finish it off, but Lord General getting killed there. Some rescue members alive. Very unfortunate that that bug still sometimes happens where the Lord General dies a bit prematurely even though the rescue is alive. Queek could go in with his Lehman Rust with a Vanquisher Cannon trying to finish off that Predator that's sitting there with 28 HP, but these missile launch attacks are doing a good job of preventing him from overextending here with the Lehman. The Predator will now fall back a little bit, 152 VP, so 129 here. This game being a long, hard, fought out game between both teams. It looks like there is a repair bunker here since the healing war isn't present, right? I don't think, and since the Bane Blade's got this permanent repair icon, this bunker here is a repair bunker for Cape Plan. But Red Team, though, lacking units now, I would consider against Blue Team. Bunker also going to go down here. These tight corridors make it very difficult for enemy teams to actually push in. Queek with enough red for a rocket run. Fumi with only three red totals has spent the majority of his red. In fact, Freeze Death and Queek are the only players available who actually have nukes ready to use. But still, Blue Team in control of all three of their super units, or still having their super units, have not lost them. At the same time, Red Team have lost their Bane Blades, they've lost the Land Raider Phobos. A Bane Blade is getting built here for Champion Player, and a Lehman Rust is getting built for Queek. But 
going up against three super units is going to be quite tough for them, especially when they are such a pop cap de deficit. Freeze death on 85 out of 100, marking mark on 95 out of 100, Cape plan 65 out of 100 compared to 73, 78, and 69. Marking Mark with probably the largest army throughout the game, has managed to maintain the largest army throughout the game, I'd say, since he always seems to be on 80 to 90 pop cap. And I know pop cap doesn't show an army's strength, but it does it does indicate what a very rough estimate of what an army's strength is. And at the same time, it's not about the army strength, it's how you use it as well. A red team behind on VP as I say blue team been so far successful using their armies but the Lehman Russes though making their way towards mid here the main blade for Cape Land though going to be fighting that Vanquisher Lehman Russ and repairs needs to go down immediately P devs are going to be set up here a flare is dropped down to prevent the Bane blade from frying but P devs are unaffected by flares for whatever reason a rocket run going to go down going to be used on purely these plasma devastators here also going to catch out some guardsmen at the same time of Cape Land as well so they try to retreat back to the beacon Red so will go down, that Bane Blade is also getting it very low as well, the Vanquishers are destroying Cape Land's Bane Blade here, Fist of Brock is even getting used here, the Bunker has also gone down, Fist of Brock is not able to actually save that Bane Blade, it will go down, the Whirlwind as well is getting torn down as well, double Terminators with also cannons here for Fumi. Land Raider Redeem is trying to make his way now to go defend Blue's Natural, the entire of Cape Land's army getting caught out there by the Robes of Torment, the Chains of Torment here, everyone trying to retreat to this beacon here, there's more Guardsmen available for him as well. Landraider Demon is trying to make his way up the staircase here, but struggling, deciding not to go up that staircase. And all the guardsmen here are just ripe for the picking, ripe for the killing here. Meanwhile, another rocket run going to kill, or trying to get, catch out these Terminators here, doing some decent damage to them, doing a lot of damage to the Plague Marine squad that was also there as well, but not actually finishing them off here. These guardsmen here for both Freeze Death and Fu and Cape Land, sorry, going to be pushing in here. The Vanquisher Lehman Rust is not very effective against those Guardsmen here, but the Noise Marines with a Blast Mask are going to be very effective here, taking out multiple models there. The Demoralized buff from the Terminators is also reducing the amount of damage that these Guardsmen are doing. The Noise Marines are going to fire a shot as well, preventing the Lord Sharon from getting the Resurrection onto the Lord Commissar And Red Team pushing in with the Lehman Rust army. The Bane Blade is also coming up here for Champion Play at the same time. Guardsmen trying to leave the area, the Lord General trying to buff them at the same time, but the Lord General buffs only work on his own units, I don't believe they work for allied units, even including IG units. The Terminators with the Auto Cannon is destroying these Guardsmen here, doing AoE damage, demolisher cannon, going to go up, going to force, oh wow, that is destructive there, doing insane amounts of damage, but Guardsmen names are reinforced free on the time, on the field, since they all have the Commissar buffs. Doesn't seem as destructive as it makes it look when you see all that red together, but the Land Raider Redeemer is going to go down here for marking Mark Crashes in a very really awkward spot here. And the Beam Blade for Champion Player doing a lot of work this game 111 VPs to 44. There is a Bane Blade alone defending that bottom VP here, and everyone is currently top with the exception of that Bane Blade bottom. But that Bane Blade does need to defend the bottom, Blue Team just needs to hold the natural and actually capture it. Red Team needs to take the natural themselves and hold it because they're going to lose in VPs, otherwise 100 VPs to 44 Noise Marines with the Bane Blade able to prevent those Guardsmen from pushing in. And Orbs of Unbound are going to go down here, going to catch out multiple Terminators and Guardsmen here. But the Terminators are able to shrug it off here for the most part, only losing a single model this game. Mines even getting placed down here by the Lord Commissar of Champion Player with a Manticore Strike decimating those mines. The Lord General getting absolutely eviscerated there. And even the heavy weapons team is getting hit by these Manticores here. Able to remain set up because of those refactor shields. that are taking a lot of damage, so the refactor shield does not protect the rest of the models, only the lead model itself. And they're taking insane mass damage. Everyone retreating back to the beacon here. Lehman has just come out for Cape Land. And Blue Team having the larger armies here. Getting beaten in this engagement here. Losing a lot of their army as well. Quick coming in with his Lord General here. Has all the rest of the members available. Does have the Vox Operator, the Sergeant and even the Commissar. Commissar able to get a resonance to the Lord General here. But I think the Lord General is just going to die outright before he's even able to run back to his retreat beacon. Able to reinforce a rescue member on the field, so he's actually able to remain alive. And Red Team going to go into the capture once again here. Is that the box operator? No, that's a Vanquisher turret game placed down. It looks like Queen going to lose his Lehman Rust here. The missile launch attacks from Marines along that Lehman, taking it out, in fact. But there are still more Lehmans available here for Red Team as well. Attacks from Marines. Trying to fire away at those Chaos Terminators missile launchers, if they actually hit those Terminators, can be quite devastating because Terminators are larger than other infantry missile launchers have a higher chance of hitting them as well. 
Marky Mark down to just Tactical Marines here. Ooh, this Manticore Strike, though, is going to be absolutely devastating, but the Guardsmen retreating in time. In fact, that K-Plan, Lehman Russ, will go down, though. Lord Commissar is getting destroyed and battered by all these tank cannon throwing at him at the same time here. The Stubbornness Bonus is the only thing keeping him alive here, because he is surrounded by so many Guardsmen, he will get healed very quickly. In fact, you can just see the amount of bodies here. I'd hate to see what the unit score is for either side in this game. Repair Bunker placed down here as well. It's well that everyone to heal at the same time. A drop pod coming in here for Marky Mark as well. And to get some more tactical marines out here. And the Bane Blade on that contested VP as well. Getting shut down here by the flare from Champion Player. Long Day Blood Letters also going to tie. Or Blood Letters coming out to tie up that Bane Blade in melee combat. The Land Raider Redeemer now coming out once again here for Marky Mark. Going to be able to push in with all the Guardsmen here. Lunch out full gates and used there with the fist of rockets, but all the guards are getting separated away from the commissaries, unable to protect all of them. Another Lehman Russ going to go down here for Queep once again. The Bane Blade remaining up and the Lehman still remaining up here for Champion Player. The Bane Blade is going to be the focus here. Apparently, there's another Lehman Russ in the back line and a Manticore Strike is going to go down, but Nunshot Fall is still activated. But all these guardsmen are going to get quite low in the end, along with a rocket run as well. Oh, wow. Goodness, the destruction here. Now everyone's retreating. They're all vulnerable. And there's multiple squads going to go down here. Multiple guardsmen. Marky Mark losing all three tactical marine squads here. Guardsmen going to go down here as well for K-Plan and freeze their fit. Only the Land Raider Redeemer remains. Some more Guardsmen are going to get very low here, but Champion Player with the Fist of Brockus alive, barely with his Lord Commissar, but instead the Guardsman squad going to go down since the Commissar retreating does end the Fist of Brockus ability time. And that Land Raider Redeemer and also can gain hits hard here. 52 VPs to 44. The Bane Blade forced off here as he double terminates with the Chaos Sorcerer pushing through that bottom side of the map. Land Raider Redeemer though, half health, the Vanquisher Cannons on the Lehmans having so much range here. can be so devastating to this Land Raider Redeemer. And more Lehmans coming in here, three Heavy Weapons teams up here for Freeze Death. These Heavy Weapons team aren't able to do too much, needing that Lord General for the Sniper Rifle buff. So they can actually have the range to do something against the enemy team. The Rod of Warp Fire getting used onto the Lord General, not catching him out there, but the Chains of Torment is definitely going to catch him out. And a Land Raider Phobos here for Fumi is going to try and push back against this Bane Blade here. And it looks like it's going to be the Concede here for Blue Team. Blue Team unable to actually push through here in the bottom side at the very least here with a 2 to 1 cap against them and red team looking poised to actually push in the top once again here with 3 Lehman Russes, a Bane Blade and 2 Manticores it's going to be game here and red team are going to be the winners